सौंदर्य प्रतियोगिता होइन अब विवेकको प्रतियोगिता हुन्छ आज नमस्ते वेलकम टू नेपाल टॉप सेवेन डिबेटर्स 2013 प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय टुडे यूथ एशिया This is the final round of the English category of grade 7, 8 and 9. The topic for today's debate is corruption is the only cause of a country's failure. Let me now introduce our panel of judges for today's final round. Our first judge is Mr. Santosh Shah. He is the president of today's Youth Asia. A second judge is Mr. Stephen Fryheit. He is a photographer, director of documentaries and has collaborated with today's Youth Asia on various occasions. For the time being, he is producing a documentary on widows and single women that will be broadcast on NTV Plus in November this year. Our third judge is Mr. Blair Dunkors. He is the executive director of Accountability Lab, an organization that works to make power holders more responsible. He has been working in Nepal for 6 years. Our finalists in the grade 7, 8 and 9 English category are Saluza Sivakoti of grade 9 from St Mary's Higher Secondary School and Eliza Prasai of grade 9 from Skyrider School. Congratulations to both the debaters for making it to the final round in this national debate competition. May I call up our first debater, Eliza Prasai, to speak for the motion. Corruption to a country's system is similar to a virus to a computer system. A virus damages the working mechanism of a computer system and corruption also damages the whole country's working mechanism. Well, corruption is like a communicable disease whose symptoms can be seen throughout the world. All the corruption is a worldwide evil phenomenon. It's particularly damaging to developing countries with fragile economies and nobody present here can obviously deny the fact that corruption is the only cause for a country's failure in economic, social social and political aspects corruption is the misuse of public goods by public officials for private purposes corruption adversely affects not only the economic efficiency and equity or but also the democratic exercise and the essence of public moral and morality that may ultimately decide whether a country can succeed in its struggle for development and nation building corruption adversely affects each and every sectors of the country well my fellow opponent here you may argue by saying that corruption is one of the thousand causes of a country's failure but i say that corruption is the root cause of country's failure and when the root cause is maintained then the other causes are automatically maintained because of corruption civil service has become demoralized politicized and to some extent criminalized disabling it to perform functions it is expected to corruption threatens a country's economic and social development and limits its ability to achieve millennium development goals as proposed by the uno taking an example my fellow opponent you may say that the other causes like malnutrition poverty unemployment illiteracy and even brain drain are causes of the country's failure but what if the country is able to utilize its corrupted money in these sectors for the improvement of the sectors why would we have to face the problems of poverty unemployment and brain drain if the country is able to utilize its corrupted budget in these sectors again you may say that population growth is a cause of country's failure if population growth is a cause of country's failure then why is our country still lagging behind in development although the population growth rate of our country is reduced to 1.7% from 2.24% and if population growth would be a cause of country's failure why would the developed countries like united states of america take the people of nepal to their countries in the name of dv lotteries and so on the countries of switzerland france and norway have a greater population than nepal but they are still more developed than nepal why it is because in those countries there is much more lesser corruption than in nepal even the countries of africa like somalia and uganda have failed to introduce good governance due to corruption nepal is not an exception in this regard in nepal corruption ranges from giving and taking bribes illegal loss in construction sectors damaging the government documents preparation of false government documents altering the results of public examination public vehicle registration crime revenue leakages and yeah, power cut and so on and these all are the various forms of corruption and they are corruption and the only cause of country's failure the cpi score of nepal according to the transparency international in 2012 was 27 out of 100 and that of new zealand was 90 out of 100 new zealand is not as supported as nepal in terms of natural resources though new zealand is much more developed than nepal why it's because in new zealand there is much lesser corruption than the, than in nepal 
Corruption has adversely affected each and every sectors of the country and each and every level of the society, let that be local level or even the, sec even the central level. In our country too, we have not been able to form new constitution because the legislature were also badly affected by corruption. According to CIA, the Anti-Corruption Agency of Nepal, the total number of anti-corruption cases filed against the government officials in Nepal during the time period of 2009 to 2010 was, uh, 2009 to 2010 was 4,925. Now tell me, my fellow opponent, when the people who are responsible to handle the administration and the country themselves are corrupt, how can we imagine the sound development and prosperity of the nation? When corruption is institutionalized, as in the case of Nepal, there is a general breakdown of all regulatory and supervisory mechanism. Corruption erodes the institutional capacity of government, siphons the resources, dis disregards the procedures, and buys and sells the public offices. It is responsible to emerge out other serious problems, damage the monetary system of the country, and damage all the infrastructure of development of the country, making it the ultimate cause of country's failure. Thank you. I'd like to call on stage Saluja Sivakuti to speak against the motion. According to some people, corruption is the only reason for a country's failure, the only hinder, hindrance towards a country's development. But what about those countries where people are dying day by day due to explosion of war and violence? What about those countries where the status of women and children is deplorable due to malnutrition, HIV AIDS and lack of human rights? What about those countries where education has not enlightened the minds of the people? Do we blame it all on corruption? Of course not. Corruption prevails in each and every country, be it the developed countries like US, UK, Germany and France, or the least developed countries like Nepal and Bangladesh. So why blame it on corruption when some of these countries have achieved highest level of development? According to my opponent, a country's, um, a country's corruption, a country is regarded as a failed state if it has less GDP, per capita income, human development index, agree. But saying that it is only affected by corruption, that makes no sense at all. Uh, according, to the, according to the Corruption Perceptions Index 2012, Nepal holds a rank of 146 with a per capita income of $603. Whereas in Russia, more corrupt than Nepal, holding a rank of 154th country corrupt, has a per capita income of $14,272. Why isn't Russia less developed than Nepal if it has more corruption? On the other hand, a country like Malawi, which is in the 80th position in the same, same chart, is much less developed, considered as much less developed country. Why? Due to several other reasons. It cannot just be corruption, can it? Apart from that, corruption is inevitable. It is present in every country. Like a seed can develop into a plant when it is given favorable environment, corruption can also breed and thrive in an environment that allows it to. Even in the history of the world, there have been so many wars, so many conflicts. A Japanese was walking on the way. He didn't expect that a bomb would fall from the sky and destroy the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki during the Second World War, did he? Was that because of corruption? Did Japan completely devastate into such a situation during the Second World War because of corruption? Of course not. It was due to the people, due to the people and their misunderstanding that caused Japan in such a state. There are so many countries. My opponent gave me an example of Somalia, the least developed country with the highest corruption rate. Agreed. But at the same time, she's failing to understand that look at the people in Somalia. Two people were beaten up in Somalia for watching World Cup. Such is the mentality of the people. In a country where people's mentality is such, in a country where people are dying due to hunger and starvation, do you expect corruption to be the only reason for its failure? Of course not. And even in the context of Nepal, we as Nepali citizens, we have to blame ourselves and not corruption. For instance, if you need to apply for any sort of job, any sort of um, financial sector, what do we do? The first thing we do, make a phone call to a private official so that he or she can give us a, an easy access to any sort of job. We corrupt the person directly. Are we not to blame? We are bl pointing a finger to the government officials. We are pointing a finger to the people who are corrupt. But are we not to blame? We're we're getting educated here and flying abroad, drenching the country in brain drain. Are we not to blame? We, as individuals, are being so much corrupt these days. We, nobody is nation-centered. Instead of idolizing ourselves, if we could mobilize ourselves together in the fight of corruption, that would be the root of development. 
saying that corruption is the only reason for a country's failure. I mean, it's almost like one of the leaders saying that he would turn Nepal into Switzerland. I mean, that is like a dogmatic approach. Therefore, I firmly believe that corruption can never be the only reason because it arises with so many problems together. Thank you. My fellow opponent, you said that the problems of malnutrition, illiteracy and HIV AIDS are more important than the problem of corruption. Then let me ask you a question. If these problems were more important than the problem of corruption, why did the people like Ram Dev and why did the people like Anna Hajare keep a fast on to death to end the problem of corruption? They should have kept a fast on to death to end the problem of malnutrition, to end the problem of HIV AIDS and so on. And you said that corruption also prevails in the U.S. and even U.S. is more developed. While in the states like California and New York do not make up all U.S.A. In U.S.A., every one person out of six person lives in poverty and that poverty is resulted from corruption. You said that the other, there are many problems for, a, for causing a country's failure. But I said that these all problems are the result of corruption. We cannot even imagine the independent judiciary, rule of law, and good governance in presence of corruption. And in presence of corruption, success of a country in presence of corruption, it's something like that that we could never achieve. Thank you. Eliza, you said that uprooting corruption from a country would, would definitely make the country developed in so many sectors because it is the root cause of poverty and all those things. I agree to some extent that corruption is also a major reason for a country's failure. But saying that it is the only reason that is completely wrong because it arises with so many problems together. Are you trying to say that uh, in Rwanda, two tribes, Hutsu and Tutsi, they fought for several years, a tribal war took place. So are you trying to say that if Rwanda is 100% corruption free, then people would stop fighting in the name of tribes? A Muslim is fighting with a Hindu today. The country is fighting for a religious cause. And you're saying that uprooting corruption from that country would stop people misunderstand would stop the misunderstanding between people does that make any sense at all of course not people will keep fighting for their religion people will keep fighting for their gods that in in, in turn gives rise to corruption corruption can never be the only cause for a country's failure because together all the problems together make a country fail this goes for both of you that uh, so far this debate has been the best performance from your side in the entire series so I congratulate both of you for that. It's a, it's a difficult topic for a grade nine student. And, uh, so, and, and I think you have done a fairly good justice to the topic so far. I wish you luck for the second, second round. One thing in debate is when you're debating in the English language, you don't ask too many questions. Asking questions does not help. You have to answer the questions because do you expect us judges to answer all your questions? No. no. Thank you, sir. I kind of had a shock when you started up because you were talking so fast and very loud and almost a little bit angry, uh, which it didn't scare me completely, but slightly. I think there's a general problem in Nepal that fantasy is often killed by uh, like a very militant schooling. That is not your fault. But, and uh, this topic is difficult compared to your age. But to me, it seemed a little bit too studied. It seemed too acted. I had problems to, um, convincing myself that this topic really means something to you. I, I, it was very clear for both of you that you have studied and you have used time on like, practicing how to present and to be in front of us. Um, I think I would have liked to hear you both on a more personal topic. That would have been nice. But don't take this as a hard criticism because it's not. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Elisa, I thought your um, definition of corruption was, was great. I liked your analogies to computer systems uh, and the analogies with other countries. That's a good way to relate the topic to something that other people might know about. I liked the fluency with which you spoke. I think you did speak quite uh, quickly, you could you could slow it down a little bit, um, but you were very fluent. You got a lot of good points in there. Uh, I like the way you emphasised the idea that corruption is a cause of problems rather than a consequence of problems. Mm -hmm. Saluja, so, also you were fantastic. You were a little bit slower, which I liked. You were you were clear. You were coherent, um, very well argued. Um, I think you made the point clearly that corruption is one issue that's important, but it's only one of 
of many, and you had some good statistics. I like the way you equated state failure with, with a lack of development. I think that shows that you're beginning to think hard about, about these dynamics. And I, I really like the way that you began to talk about personal accountability, how it begins with all of us to change these dynamics. Although I'm not sure that completely supported your argument um, as you had laid it out, but I really like the idea. Um, one thing uh, I would encourage you both to do in the next round is to maybe think more about how corruption is not just about paying bribes. Um, and Saluja, you touched on it a little bit. It's also about behaviors and it's also about the rules that exist that might be unfair. You know, why are some people excluded from power and resources and why are other people taking it all for themselves? Because that is also a, a factor of, of corruption. So I think maybe if you could bring those things out a little bit, that would be really interesting. Thank you. This festival is hosted by the Danish Center for Culture and Development. Things you can't buy for money is the topic for this year's exhibitions. We'll hold three large photographic exhibitions in Denmark's three largest cities. We're looking for young photographers from Nepal, Myanmar, Bangladesh and Mali. Anyone is welcome to participate and we would very much like to see the work of young female photographers as well. Send us your most original photos and show us how the world looks where you are right now. We will now begin with the rebuttal round. We deal with corrupt practices in each and every walk of our life. Corruption has a disastrous effect in each and every part of our life. Social and physical infrastructures built during the course of development due to corruption suffer from short lifespan and disrepair. My fellow opponent, you said that Russia should have, up, should have upgraded its level. But do you know that the CPI score of Russia according to the report of 2012 AD is just 28 out of 100 and that of Nepal is 27 out of 100? Are not Russia and Nepal of the same rank? Of course they are and how can Russia upgrade its position until it, it improves its corrupt conditions? Well, you talked about civil war, tribal war and so on. But let me ask you, why do these wars happen? They happen due to the unequal distribution of public resources. And the unequal distribution of public resources are ultimately caused due to corruption. And if we, we are able to remove the corruption, then there will be equal distribution of resources leading not any civil wars and any sorts of war in the country. Well, now you then say that malnutrition can be a cause of country's failure, poverty can be a cause of country's failure, unemployment can be a cause of country's failure. But how can you say that poverty, unemployment and malnutrition can be a cause of country's failure? Even in our, does not the country need to spend budget to solve these problems? Definitely the country needs. And the country spends too. But the money that is alloc allocated for solving these problems never reached to the targeted sectors due to corruption. The newly built school is mismanaged after a couple of weeks. The newly built road is damaged after a couple of months. The newly built hospital is totally mismanaged after a couple of weeks. Why does this happen? Because of corruption. Because of corrupt practices prevailing in those places. And when there are such corrupt practices everywhere, then how can you imagine the development of the nation? How can you imagine the success of the nation when there are corrupt practices hampering each and every political, economical and social sectors of the country? Thank you. Eliza, although you mentioned about you, uh, Russia being 28th in the, out of 100 in the most corrupt countries and Nepal being in 27, you did not talk about the per capita income. It is almost twice than that of Nepal. That fact simply proves that people living in Russia have a high standard of life. You said that the roads are not properly damaged. They are damaged within a few months and weeks. Is that because of corruption or is that because of people who are not making an effort to preserve those? Now, taking an example of a country like Niger, a country whose 80% of the land is covered by Sahara Desert. Is it lagging behind because of corruption in such a country where people can't even afford to corrupt and give corruption? Zimbabwe, another country which is quite less corrupt, but the second least developed country due to several factors like HIV AIDS, lack of sanitation, awareness among the people. Burundi, another country, landlocked and same problems like health problems and malnutrition problems in uh, unaware people in that country. There are so many countries, Ethiopia, another less corrupt country which suffers from severe drought almost half of the year. There are so many reasons why a country can fail and saying that corruption is the only reason why a country can fail that can simply be just like making a fallacious approach here. 
Corruption can never be the only reason for a country's failure. Okay, let's say that Nepal is made 100% corruption free, but it fails to maintain good diplomatic relationship with superpowers of the world. We are happy, our country is free from corruption. And tomorrow, a nuclear weapon, a nuclear bomb is dropped in the country, the country is finished. Will that happen because of corruption or, the, or because of the reason that it failed to maintain diplomatic relationships with one of the superpowers of the world? This fact simply proves that corruption can never be the only cause for a country's failure. We the people have to make an effort to uproot it if it is in, in some context uh, hindering development. Thank you. There was a bombarding in Japan in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Okay, I agree. But if Japan would be a corrupt country like Nepal, would it be able to maintain the same status as it has maintained today? Of course not. Do you have the question of my answer, Shaluja? And and development projects of a country suffer a lot due to corruption. Let me give an example. Arun Thrad hydroelectricity project of our country is not yet completed due to corruption. The problem of power cut we are facing is due to corruption. And you talked about Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a corrupt country and its CPI score is just 8. And if it's able to maintain, if it's able to maintain its position in the corruption perception index, then it's sure that it will develop. And Somalia also has its has its CPI score 8. And you may say that Femine attacks Somalia frequently, so Femine can be a cause of Somalia's failure. But if the government tries to solve the problem of Femine by utilizing its corrupt budget and by utilizing its country's resources without any sorts of corruption, then why cannot Somalia march ahead itself in development? Therefore, I come up with a strong conclusion that the factors Corruption causes a hindrance in country's administration, in country's economy, in country's politics, and so on. That makes is the only cause for country's failure. Thank you. When I was given this topic, corruption is the only reason for a country's failure, I went home and I told my parents. I went to school and I told my teachers. Their reaction? Against? Are you serious? I do not blame corruption for being the only reason for a country's failure, but this, their reaction towards it. Each and every person, whenever I talked about something that in the class, when I asked uh, their opinions about corruption, everyone raised their hands saying that it is the only reason. But I say that that, their raising hands, that is the only reason why our country and several other countries are lagging behind. Failing to understand that their actions, their efforts can make a difference. They're just sitting and pointing a finger to other countries. Somalia, I said that it is one of the most corrupt countries with one of the least uh, least development and the most corrupt countries. But I also said that the mentality of the people has to change first. They never accept changes when they're getting the time to change. So I firmly believe that corruption cannot be the only reason for a country's failure. Thank you. You did very well. I thought the content of your rebuttals were, were great. Elisa, your, your talk about um, civil war and unequal distribution of public resources and all of these issues um, that corruption are at, at the heart of, is at the heart of, um, was, was really well argued. I thought you clearly laid that out. Um, it, was, it was slower than before, which was good. You still definitely tried to pack as much as you could in, but, it was, um, but that was great. Saluja, uh, I liked your reference to all the other countries. Um, I really liked particularly the, the uh, comment you made about drought uh, and nuclear war and these things. You know, it, it bolstered your argument significantly, I thought. And I liked at the end that you brought in a bit more of an emotional experience and you said, you know, you talked to your teachers and, and your friends and, and they had given you their perspective on these things. So it, it brought it home a bit more personally, I thought. Uh, I thought you both lingered for a little bit too long on the index and where countries are on the index which which is relevant but i don't think was at the core of the argument and neither of you mentioned the private sector you talked generally about how this relates to the government but there's also a lot of corruption in the private sector and it would have been good to hear a little bit about that and you also i think both talked about it very much as a technical issue when actually it's it's an emotional issue and it's a political issue and I'd love to have, have heard a little bit more about that but overall I thought you were you were fantastic the presentation was great and you both got much better as it as it went along so well done Elisa I think you had uh, an indignation that seemed uh, much more real this time still I think there was a lack of spontaneity and that might have to do with the fact that you're not older than you are and uh, I mean I'm not really convinced of how much uh, corruption has influence on your daily life. Uh, but I think you did very well. 
Salute ya. Uh, I think you had a nice timing and uh, lots of confidence and uh, still the spontaneity it wasn't there and I'm not sure why it wasn't there but uh, overall I think you both made a very strong impression and um, I would like really like to see you keep up the good and studying spirit thank you I'm glad that you maintained your consistency in the second round and you still had certain contents to give out Elisa I would still say, uh, say that you'll have to be slow and clear uh, as you speak and uh, So Luza you were clear and better uh, in the second round than compared to your first round. Uh, however, so Luza you repeated a lot of contents from your first round. And again re you reiterated the same fact that corruption is not the only cause and I was hoping you would as I suggested earlier bring more windows uh, to your argument. And uh, I like the fact that you brought the comparison between diplomatic relations versus the status of a corruption of a country. That was uh, interesting. and uh, eliza you brought new contents in the second uh, second round like totally we didn't we didn't hear and that was very impressive and i like the fact the way you brought counter argument on the issues of japan and ethiopia and uh, that was very well picked what was most impressive is the example of arun third corruption which you could have used in the first argument you saved it till the last and you didn't forget it so i think uh, that is a very good way of uh, rebuttal or counter argument for a debater to hold on to a content like that and save it till the last so i think that was very smart of you let's see what the results are like you both have done very well today thank you sir while the judges are finalizing their marks we are all eagerly waiting for the announcement of the winner of the grade 7 8 and 9 english category this is the tough part of the debate and I'm given the worst job of deciding the winner <laughs> and the runner up not the loser one of the so the vote is not 3 on 1 the vote is 2 on 1 and 1 on 1 so that basically means that uh, you both have done very well and uh, but we do have a winner a winner for category 2 grade 7 8 and 9 english language is eliza prasai <laughs> and the runner up for Category 2 English language grade 7 8 and 9 is Saluza Siwakoti. <laughs> and Saluza uh, the judges have recommended you for the special mention so you'll have to wait for a month and not lose hope. Congratulations. It's official. Elisa Prasai of Skyrider School has been declared the winner of Nepal's top 7 debaters 2013 in the English category of grade 7 8 and 9 I'd like to declare Saluja Sivakoti of grade 9 from St Mary's Higher Secondary School as the runner up of Nepal's top 7 debaters 2013 English category of grade 7 8 and 9 If you are a student studying between grade 7 and bachelor's level you can apply for Nepal's top 7 debaters 2014 The application submissions are open now. You can call the TYA office at 4257250 or send us an email at youthtya@gmail.com. Don't forget to watch the finals of the other categories of Nepal's top 7 debaters 2013 the following week. We'll be back soon with Nepal's top 7 debaters 2014. Namaste. Thank you.